Uh, well, howdy, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of Do Not Worry. It's Thursday. We're back. Uh, episode 105. 105. Who to thunk it? Joined by, uh, you know, Nadim and Nul. How's it guy? How's the guys going? Seven. Does that uh, make sense? How's the guys Takif, going? Okay. No, I'm good. I'm doing great, guys. We have a, we have an episode tonight. We have an episode for you guys. Okay. It's I don't want to I don't want to talk about the Jadar Dakani thing, folks. I don't want to talk about it, but we're gonna have to. <laughs> we're gonna leave it till the end of the episode. Let's enjoy our lives first. So Jadar Dakani betrayed me again, and um, Muhammad, the dietitian, talks smack about me on Jad's podcast. But is anyone even listening to the podcast? Oppenheimer is breaking records. Everybody's watching Oppenheimer. Did you guys watch it? Mm -hmm. we, we're going to try Masters Takis ripoffs. Ella do Takis Masters with the tornadoes. We're going to taste them. Are they good? Are they worthy of the Takis uh, ripoff name? Joy Tassidi's Nezil Bil comments. He thinks he's better than all of you. <laughs> and we may have found the worst Lebanese shawarma in New York City, folks. Uh, wow. And a lot more things. There's a lot more topics that we're going to dive into. But before we get into it, let me just take a second to thank some of our amazing patrons. Uh, who we love. Patrons, blonde patrons like Marki Wan, Darkwing Duck, Mo K, Nobody99, Always Worried, Joyce Kalas, and Karen's Cravings. And superhero patrons like Dani Karam, Mustafa Wahbe, Fadi Mukarzil. And Rassan Hamoud and our got your patrons, Jessica and Rifat Fakih and Burgery. Folks, we desperately need our patrons' help. We cannot do this without you guys. I cannot pay my interns. I cannot keep them around if it weren't for you guys. So if you guys like the show, if you guys find any value in it, uh, consider supporting us on Patreon. Find a tier that's right for you. And you get a nice thank you from us here every week. And I need to be doing I need to do a live stream soon. Okay, I'm gonna do a live Patreon stream. We're gonna do a Zoom call. Yes. Just with me and the patrons. Okay, the things always get juicy on those Patreon <laughs> Zoom calls. Let me tell you that. So for some extra juice, uh join us and next week I'm gonna hit you all with a with a Zoom call, I promise. So let's do I've it. I've never been in a Patreon call. Oh, uh, you're missing out. They're very, uh, they get very uh, dramatic. I mean. So uh, anyways, <laughs> we'll talk about it next time. Okay, I can't tell you on camera. <laughs> it's that bad. Moving on, folks. Let's let's get into the topics. Okay, first of all, Café Matik, Asseria, Bas. Everybody okay, knows bye. the restaurants <laughs> at the airport. You know, everybody, everybody hates Café Matik. It, it was Rida's favorite thing to complain about on Twitter. <laughs> the price of <laughs> Café Matik. You know, what... <laughs> What's Twitter? What's Lebanese Twitter without Café Matik receipts? But you know what I mean? Mafi, it's not, it's not the same. So, uh... Who is Sakkaru? Fatah Gairo? Or Fatah Hobas? No, it's closed. Sakkaru, I'm going to open a hall. Zata Ruzet. Sakka. So here, I, I, I had a trip to Dubai. As you guys know, we skipped last week because I had a trip to Dubai. <laughs> I took photos in front of the now closed <laughs> Café Matik, folks. R.I.P. Rest in peace. I'm glad I got to see it one last time. If it was still open, I would have definitely bought one of those overpriced sandwiches just for... For old times sake, you know what I mean? It would have been here, it would have kept the tuna sandwich yeah. for, forever and ever. So uh, God bless Café Matik. I was just happy to, to, to walk in there a little bit. Hey, this is an, uh, according to a quick article by Lorient Le Jour. À l'aéroport de Beyrouth, le remplacement des restaurants a commencé. Café Matik et Bakloumi laissent la place à Dunkin' Donuts ou encore à Zata Rouzet. Let's quick this as serious. C'est la fin d'une époque. Sorry. C'est la fin d'une époque en place depuis des années et souvent décriée pour le pour leur prix jugé excessif par une majorité des voyageurs. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I haven't read French in a long time. Les enseignes de de, de restauration de l'aéroport international de Beyrouth ont commencé à être remplacées. Sur les réseaux sociaux, les snacks et cafés Café Matic et Bakloumi ont, ont annoncé jeudi qu'ils ferment auraient leur porte lundi prochain, soit le 17 juillet, mettant ainsi une fin, un point final à 18 ans de service selon le personnel du standard de l'ail, blablabla. Bla bla. Ces différents restaurants ont commencé à préparer la fermeture, blablabla. Bla bla. Ok, so instead, I'm Iftah Hozat Aruzet, which we've talked a lot about on the show, and Hozat Aruzet, if you're going to be uh, doing this stuff at the airport, ma bad, no. no one wants to, to struggle with their food before flying. We're going to give Zat Aruzet the benefit of the doubt. By the way, when I came back from, from Dubai, I had to order Zat Aruzet in the middle of the night. Because my kid fish in a fit, yeah. So, hey, it was fine. Nothing happened to me. So I kind That's of enjoyed it. For, yeah. I got the hummus with the crackers. You, you guys do not send nearly enough crackers for that hummus, by the way. Not enough <laughs> crackers. And, uh, and I got a lahm bajin. It was okay. Not really. Anyways, uh, so that's the that's the airport. Uh, I 
Duncan Wake, when I was there, bad Makino Fethain. You know what I mean? So I couldn't buy anything. Literally couldn't buy a bottle of water at the airport. It was kind of crazy. But Duncan is a nice and reliable with, place. I'm happy with Duncan. Hadan al Malik al there was a tweet that said Malik al like planes are going to crash because of Zahadan, someone burps on a plane. <laughs> I hope Malik al I love yeah, Malik al I love Malik al but please, Mish bil Matar. I'm Jed Mabtis, but. Well, friends. That tweet was right. Uh, I went to Dubai. I was thinking of giving you guys a quick review. And have you guys been to Dubai before? I'm sure. You, yes. You, you've not uh, been. You've been. No, no. Most of Lebanon has been to Dubai, folks. To but DXB, Habib. DXB. Look, it was a very, it was a very nice trip. I'm not gonna lie. It was nice. Yeah. to in Lebanon. You know what I mean? It was a nice work trip. I got to see uh, my coworkers who I haven't seen in a while because most of them work in Dubai. So that was very nice. It's very clean. Everybody respects you. The service is great. All of that. Give show bit, Mike. Teacher, but so it's very hot here too right now, so yeah. mm. I can't say that it's much better here. The one thing about Dubai, the way that I always kind of describe Dubai, it's like a it's like a giant airport terminal with a giant duty free. You know what I mean? It's got all these stores that you haven't seen in a while. It's got all these restaurants that you haven't seen in a while. Like, oh, they have a Wendy's here? Like, holy shit, they have a cheesecake factory? You spend your time like, holy <laughs> shit, they have this, they have yeah, that. Five guys. Mm. Five guys, everything. You know, it's it's a beautiful giant airport terminal with all the shopping and restaurants that you need, but eventually. You have to go home, I feel. You know what I mean? Like, can you live in an airport terminal? Uh, the gays, folks. The gay, we're not going to talk about this too much because at PES, if I show the videos, I'll go to prison. But show Lebanon's gays, gays are under attack again. PES, this is the fifth episode where we talk about gay people being under attack in Lebanon. What Dayman happened? Fishy. Hassan Nasrallah told a video and no, the, oh. and no homosexuality isn't okay, whatever. Washadan. A Lebanese stand-up comedian, she made like a very funny response, which came in, I don't want to fucking play here because... It gets a little extreme, you know. Shadden uh, doesn't mince words, and she shouldn't. Best no. So, gays, we're not gonna talk. We're not gonna linger on this because every week someone's after you guys. God bless you. Hope you guys stay strong. You know, if you need anything. Best you know. Shadden, so incredibly brave. We very so brave, right very brave. You know what? Keep doing what you're doing. Nahna, we got. We're on your side. Uh, that's all I'll say on the matter. Joy Tassidis, aka John Masidis. We gotta <laughs> talk about this. I said, yeah, okay. I, again, uh, we had made an agreement. I was gonna talk about it, but this. This came to my attention and it's very douchey. We should okay? talk about it. We should talk about it. Yeah. I jo uh, j I, I'm calling John. him John, non ironically. You really gotta learn. So, Hadan, this was on one of his videos. Hadan Hatalu comment, Bonjour, bonjour, what is your full time job? <laughs> Joy Tassidis, uh, as a reply, Katablo, I'm a full time content creator and social media influencer. And yes, that's a real job before you all start your lame jokes <laughs> with a smiley face. Nice enough reply. I don't know what someone told him, Vru Hadan Katablo Shi. La, la Joy Joy replied, This will seem so rude, but you asked for it. I'm probably making more than you and your entire family a month with a smiley face. Continue laughing. <laughs> uh, so then, George Falamanki, Biktiblo, God bless your papi, Habibi. And then, Zbeli, Biktiblo, lol, great career, etc. So, anyways, Hone, Hanna Joy, Kitty taking it personally, who like attacking people. He bashed the guy, bro. Basically saying, I'm making more money than you and your entire family a month. <laughs> Continue laughing. Tayyip. What do you guys? Do you guys have anything to say about this? Yeah, a kid. Um, Anna, I genuinely liked him. Bad I know I follow him and I like his videos. Allo, ma bihabna awala shwe. He hates you. But bala she zajne min his comments. I swear, like, and every time hada biamilo comment, I know comment taba malik. I know I feel like it's fine. It's not that bad at all, yeah. I know. I know. Why did he get so defensive? Haram he. Ata emoji halu kaman. I know. Again, dude, you work in social media. People are gonna write comments. I make more money than you and your family. We get it. You're rich. <laughs> yeah, it's your Great. job. Exactly. Yeah, no, Act like oh, by the way, I know exactly how much Joy charges for his posts and stuff on Instagram. This is sent from an unconfirmed source. Uh, for one Instagram post and uh, stories, he'll charge $300. Two Instagram posts and stories, you pay $450. And three Instagram posts plus stories for six hundred dollars. So joy, I'm be usma sari every month. Usma la mami lah ikil every every day be nazi like six stories from multiple matai mu mabari shu. So the guy's making a lot of money. Just don't shove it in people's faces. Be humble, bro. No one likes someone who's bragging. No one likes someone who's shayif halo. I'm not gonna say you're a nice guy. You again, he threatened to sue us. For anyone who doesn't remember, Joy Tassidis 
threatened us with litigation at 4 a.m. At 4 a.m. Haram Haki Noor, Khawaf Ra Noor. Then Bahdal Ne, you know, he took. Khawaf Ra, please. And Noor, ma khafta abada. Abada. Yeah, me, yeah, ma khawaf Ra. And Balakis, and who am I? Bahdal Ne, he was nice. I know, I didn't want to deal with it on like Monday at 4 a.m. I dealt with it. I wasn't nice. He wasn't going to sue us. Yesterday, don't comment like that. Anjad, خلاص. Don't be an asshole. Okay, you don't need to be. And if you're making money, you don't need to talk about it, bro. وهول كومنتس بقى خلوك بطل تعمل مصير اكثر منه من عائلته يس كارما ات از هيز جوب سو بس يا عادي انا تشيل نو لايك اي دونت نو مان جست كارما سمثينج باد از جونا هابن تو يو ان يور باي ذا واي برو صراحه كونتنت كرييشن اند بينج كونتنت كرييتر لشركه او وات ايفر اخرى انياك ابشع شيء معقول تعيشه بحياتك Bro, he's a, he's a walking commercial. He has no thoughts of his own. He just gets paid to say that restaurants and things are amazing. Yani, what a life. So you feel like bad reviews? Who am I? Yeah. They're not reviews. You just get paid to say that this is great. Okay. Wow, yeah. you make so much money. Keep it to yourself, bro. Just don't be a dick about it. So I was on TikTok recently, and I was recommended this random video of a monkey running to, towards a man. It's actually Monkey Run 2. This was the first video I saw. And uh, it just, I don't know. I... Uh, It blew me away. Yo, that chimp is so happy to see his dad. He's wearing a LeBron James jersey. <laughs> you don't like monkeys? I love her. I feel like they're so weird. I know, I know how they resemble humans. Why they are so? I know. I want to hold one. I want to hold one. I know. I would love to hold a monkey. To be honest with you, I know. Sadatan is my favorite pet. I want to get one. Pet? They're not pets. They're not supposed to be a pet. No, my wife. No, my mother. I mean, I would pick a monkey over a cat or a dog. I would love to have a monkey. What? Not, but so no, yeah. he needs to be in the wild. Haram. I don't think. Uh, anyways, I thought this was the only video of a monkey running towards this guy. But there was another one. <laughs> I guess they do this often. Him and this guy. <laughs> it's not the same guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know when I come home, my cat runs. Hey. This is the most random trend on TikTok. Haram. Oh, Shmadu. Oh. I swear one of my biggest fears is a monkey and he will kill me. What will he kill me? Like he would pull my hair or he would steal my phone or my wallet. She doesn't want him to, to see her text. Uh, I'm guessing he has, to, by the way, this is the account is Monkey Run. Malik Al Wuhush, UAE underscore Lion King. He's got 5.4 million followers. I don't know about if he's abusing any of these animals. Okay, I don't know if he, if it's like Tiger King and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, what is he doing with these baby tigers when they grow up? Does he, I don't know anything. Is, is he abusing animals? Keep me out of it. All I saw was him running, monkeys running towards him. And I watched him bathing this little monkey. I don't know if it's the same chimp, but look. You don't find this cute? No, well, it's way they're like little humans. That look weird. So cute. Like they ain't too rich, bro. I would kill to kill to bathe that little monkey right now. Give me like a bucket of soap and some water and like let me bathe the monkey. I would love to just like tickle him and stuff. I want to live that guy's life. I want to have a monkey running towards me, man. Anna, this is my new favorite account. Laila Akhtar, any time, any monkey stuff you see, I'm, I've been liking them on TikTok, so they should be appearing on the algorithm a little bit more. Shawarma New York, hey the, hey the, hey the, if, hey the. I saw it on my feed, by the way, before you sent it. Ah, really? And I shifted it. It was all over Twitter. Uh, this was just obviously look, a lot of stuff comes up on Twitter. People like Americans making chocolate hummus, umabari shoe. People are like, what? What are you doing? You're disgracing hummus, suheida. This is a Lebanese man, okay, an Arab, one of us in New York. <laughs> Someone asked him, like, this is the only good shot. Bro, Anna, when I lived in New York, it was an Egyptian place. They made very good falafel. They used to make pretty good shawarma. So if you're in New York and you're watching this, or you don't know where to get shawarma, I don't know if Mamoons is still around and if they're still making shawarma, but if they are, hit up Mamoons falafel, get some shawarma. It's pretty damn good. I don't know what the fuck this guy's talking about, but let's watch. 
one thing in New York, there's not a lot of like good Lebanese pitas. A lot of time they use like the fat pita breads. This is the Lebanese bread. It's much thinner, so the pocket. Yeah, the bread looks nice. The smaller. And this is tum. It's a garlic sauce. So we load the garlic sauce in there. I got you. So then I make a homemade harissa. A bit too much tum. Harissa is like a, it's like a Yemenite chili paste. Okay. Then I have marinated lemon cabbage, oh, like a, like a lemon cabbage. slaw. And then these are wild cucumber pickles. Because in the Middle East, cucumbers grow wild. It's crazy. And they look like they look like they're they're much 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 lighter, but you can't really eat them raw. You have to pickle them. And then sumac onions. These are pickled turnips. Eleven spice marinated eggplant. And then it's coriander potatoes. And that. And that gets closed up. Is this the closest you can get to Lebanese shawarma in New York? Yeah. This is the closest you can get to Lebanese shawarma in New York, and he said yes. No, motherfucker. No, it ain't. Go to the, the Egyptians. I'm, make it better. I'm sure it's good. I uh, know. This is best, best men, uh, men no it's show. not authentic. This is not an authentic yeah, show. So. The parsley and potatoes. The, the, the cabbage. Cabbage. Pickled will, cabbage. Will, 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 will corn, uh, whatever. Corn. Coriander. Eggplant. Eggplant. Yeah, it's like a vegan. Uh, Break how You can't even eat this. The way he, you can't even wrap it. If you can't wrap sandwich shawarma, you're doing it wrong. You got to wrap it. If you can't wrap it, it's not a shawarma. This is a I got offended, and I don't get offended by these chocolate hummus videos. Hey, that was like what? Because he's telling the guy's asking us. So this is the most authentic. He's like, yep. No, mm. no, it ain't, bro. Okay, this is too much. It might be, del it might be tasty, but so not shawarma. It's sandwich. Yeah, it's sandwich. It's a weird chicken sandwich. Experimental it's, sandwich. Yeah, it's a weird the chicken concoction. My body should Speaking of Twitter, where people are freaking out over things. I know. So this is someone else. I'm going to Okay. The hairdresser I always go to used to take $75 to $100. I called him to take an appointment and he told me the prices are now between $160 and $300 and he will charge me $250. I then found out he has a price list for Mikhtarbin and a price list for uh, Lebanese people. Mumkinin. And then she, no, fuck him, I will never go there again. Ma, did you get the full tweet? No. She, fuck it, I will never go there again, she heke. We have our friend uh, AX15 who's like, <laughs> which is, Hanjed, she really finds everything to complain about. Everything. Remember the, ep la the last episode? Every topic she had a, she had a take on that topic. <laughs> really, she should start a podcast. I'm really thinking. I think that's the greatest solution that I I'm giving. I think you have to do a segment with the podcast. Yes. <laughs> 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 every week you she should have find a something. Hey, we should have a recurring Rida I know, Anna, I don't follow her, but I know all her tweets. <laughs> I don't even follow her, but everything be bevelling because uh, I think I muted her and I think she's muted me, which we have not blocked each other, which <laughs> I think also is a sign of mutual respect that we have for one another. Yeah. Muting is one thing. Blocking, no, she's not done There's that yet. Thing. Which I think is cool. Child abuse campaign. Who sent this to Intabata? Anna, I sent it. I thought this was a parody at first. Anna came in. It was so <laughs> weird. I thought this was a parody. So this is a real uh, campaign against child abuse. Let's watch this. It's it's the most. It's very weird. <laughs> That's a very good question, little kid. Lish and Tahik. This guy. Kautak? I, I don't know who this guy is. Shu? What did he say? Lish and Tahik. This Tlautak. Tlautak. Okay, this guy, this guy looks like he's 17. Lish and Walad. Like, first of all, Menno Zabit Bil Roll. He's way too young, you know what I mean? To be playing whoever he's supposed to be playing. And like, he does like <laughs> 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 it's, yeah. What the fuck? It's <laughs> either like, I don't know if this guy's an aspiring actor, maybe Honey the director wasn't giving you very good direction. <laughs> 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 I have not heard of that. So what is he? Is he doing sketches? No, he's doing 15 seconds. He states facts. Okay. Oh, and what's the guy? Like, I have so many questions. Where did he come from? Is he his dad? It's a flashback one. And I get what they're trying to do. I get an off flashback explaining, like, 
انا من زمان بيلبس عبايه بس انه بعده شكله هو ذاته يعني مش انه هو كان ولد صغير هي هي لوكس ذا سيم از هي واز ون هيز هيتنج ذا ليتل بوي سو هلا في واحد هيدا قاعد على كنبايه وفي واحد فات دود وذ بيرد عم بيشبقه كف اتس جست ليتل لايك اوكي عن اول وجديد انت بتربايه عن اول وجديد ليش انت لانه المعنف يمكن يصير معنف ولانه العنف ينتقل من شخص لشخص واحيانا من الاهل للولاد خلينا ندعم جمعيه حمايه اللي عم تحارب لهالقضيه روتر اكت بيروت سيدرز بتنظم مهرجان ب 28 و 29 تموز اول ذا سبورت فور حمايه باي ذا واي يا حمايه لاب او يعني انا اتس نوت اباوت ذا كامبين ولا ذا مسج ولا شيء ولا حتى هو دايركتد ذا كامبين ولا شيء اتس اباوت ذا اكتنج اي جيس ذا اكتنج از هوربل جست هو ليت وي واتش ذا فيرست بارت اجين ام سوري ام سوري عماد شو عم تعمل؟ قاعد على السلولات، قد ايه لك قاعد على السلولات؟ شيل السلولات من ايدك. قاعد على السلولات ها؟ برو هيز هيز فور ييرز اولد. عم جاوبني؟ عماد اطلع اوضتك. ليش؟ عم جاوبني اقول لك شو شو قلت لك؟ انجا هي كانت سبيك تا يجاوبك، عم جاوبني ولا ايه؟ ما قال لك شيء السبب. ليش انا هيك؟ ليش انا هيك؟ لانه من يومين اجى بي ضربني. كانه هاي من يومين فلاش باك اجين حمايه بتذكر انا حمايه كانوا ذا يوست تو باي اوت هول سينما ويبيعوا تيكتس لذا هوبيت كل ما كنت احضر فيلم هوبيت فور سم ريزن اي واز كان للحمايه فور سم ريزن او او سوبر مان فيرس باد باي كمان كان حمايه ايه شيء دائما حمايه ذي رنت اوت بيج موفيز هوبيت هوبيت ديسوليشن اوف سماو ميد سم ماني فور فور ذم كيدز يو جات ماي ماني يلا هيدا تشايلد ابيوز كامبين خلصت اه يو جايز ريدي تو كراي مين بده يبكي مين عبي له يبكي ويدمي يا انا ليه بدك انا اكيد شفتها هيدا هيدا this was this was made around all over social media folks هيدا this is عن فادي the inj- a man who was injured by انفجار بيروت did you watch this mm-hmm. انت حضرتها yeah. تعالوا نبكي سوا يلا جيبوا الكلين انا بدي اخذ حبه كلينكس <تصفيق> رح نعمل بلاي would you rather have 500 bucks yeah. or give a thousand dollars to a stranger Would brain injuries like mine? You you rather donate the money? Yeah. If you don't mind me asking you, what happened? Explosion. It's Beirut. How are you now? I am better. Why don't you want the money? It brings me joy to help people. Do you want to help people here today in the store? Oh, the big big big. Happy. What was your name? Fine. He won a thousand bucks, and he wants to hand out money to strangers. So. Oh really? Yeah. Thank you so much. I will share this with others. Oh, thank you. Oh. Thank you, my friend. There you go. Are you sure there's anything? Yeah. Like we, we are 100% positive. What do you say, Wyatt? We're going to do something nice today, too, to pass it on. The fact that you wanted to share it with people, Fatty, $1,000 cash for you as well. Thank you. No problem. God gave me a second chance. You died in the bombing? Yeah. So I... His heart stopped twice. Love you. Yes, I hope you do. Well, that was wow. that, that was heartwarming. That was beautiful. We don't we don't watch a lot of things. We don't watch a lot of nice things on no. this podcast. We usually, you know, we're dicks. I'm kind of an asshole, you know. So we hate on people. That's what we do. This was uh, this was very sweet. So heartwarming. And this reminded me a lot of uh, you know like uh, the world sucks type of videos. But you know, with him, it's just because, like, I didn't even know. Like my, we think of the people that died. You know what I mean? And then other people that have just like scars and stuff. My mind didn't even go to people who were like now paralyzed so. and stuff because of the uh, blast and shit. So it's very depressing. God bless you, Fad. You're a very good What man. What a wonderful man. Wonderful man. I think he's out there in Canada because them didn't look like American dollars. So it looks like he's out there in uh. Canada helping them locals. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what, like, it's obviously very emotional. Don't know what to say. Is it, you know, we've, we've lived through the blast. It's very depressing. It's, it's, um, It's very beautiful to see someone this generous and with so much hope, like he's so positive. Like if I were him, bro, I would have fucking rolled my wheelchair off a fucking cliff. I'm telling you, man, I would not have been, I would not have been as, as down as he is. Uh, 
so to show that level of strength and to think of others, he can barely speak, you know, and he's thinking of other people. It's very, it's very nice. Now, now moving away from, you know, so remembering sad moments yeah. and death and injury to birthdays, you know, birth, starting anew. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> it's our favorite, folks, Teresa Aii. It's her birthday. Happy birthday. We love you on the show. I don't know if she knows. She was like, thank you, thank you. Merci a Halloween. I don't think she, like, I did what I said. Let's here. Let's celebrate yeah, Soa yeah. Materesia. Let's, ce- let's celebrate Soa Materesia. Yeah. Why did her mother blow Ma? <laughs> now we have a montage of pictures, cutting the cake on the balcony. Ya Allah, oh, we got the dad. Baba. What a beautiful celebration. <laughs> Hanab, she's 19, she's so young, and about to be young, uh, <laughs> promising <laughs> career ahead of her. You know, the paysage, I don't know how cars. It's a very nice paysage. Can you can build a or something? <laughs> I guess. It's very nice. And they have like a farm, like a jardin. Cars about Pixar? Yeah, I did. Uh, I've never watched any of the Cars movies. I'll be honest with you. Well, they're, no. they're the ones that look the least interesting to me. Anna Kamel. You know, out of all the Pixar movies, I'll never touch the Cars ones. Maybe the first one, Shift Chuai Minna, was. I heard the second and the third <laughs> one were horrible. Robi Erfo. Everyone says they're horrible. Yeah, but they don't. 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 It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Hala, speaking of another favorite of ours, Nahna Teresa Ai is a favorite. We also, you know, Rima Zakka became one of our favorites. If you don't know who Rima Zakka is, she's the lady who sells the coffee on the side of the road. <laughs> she's the lady. If someone, it looks like someone broke her heart. She's sad. She's, she's on like a two minute rant. Five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> If you have a video, if you two other videos, kill one had on Jadshi five minutes, we're and I watched all of them. We're not. We're gonna watch a few minutes of this. Let's see a dish fin and dain. Yeah. We learn five minutes. Kill one words. She. Let's see. Sabah al khair. Fi shabab al iyam. 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 Fi shabab وكل شيء انه شو بده بتهتم فيه شو مضايقك بتجي بتحكي معه شو مضايقك يا حبيبي شو شو مزعلك بتهتم فيه ما بده بده هو بس انه يتسلى معه بتجي بعدين من بعد مده بده تحكي بالجاز بقول لا انا ما بدي اتجوز We don't know if she's talking about herself. She's probably talking about someone else. Mom, yeah. I'm talking about someone else. I'm talking about someone else. They still do that at 60. I don't know. But I just want to ask you something. Tomorrow, but you're going to come to Risla, your sister. Don't tell her anything. 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 قول لاختك هالشي يا ماما لانه اخت لانه بنت مثل ما انت ما بدك تتجوز بنت العالم تتسلى معها انتبه على اختك بالبيت عندك اخت بالبيت عندك عندك اولاد اختك انتبه على هالقصص البنت ما تسلي لها البنت عم تتعرف عليك لا تبني عائله اذا اذا مثل ما بيقولوا او شيء بيصير في صداقه بين فلات مي هيدا اي ويل اكسبلين بليز سو في ثلاثة فيديوز على اكاونت كل واحد منهم like five uh, six minutes هالستيل mm-hmm. I watched all of them so فهمت كل القصة what is the story <laughs> so هون it's funny لأن بتبلش الفيديو بأنه في شباب عم يحكوا بنات by the end of the video ليك ما تحكيني هيك <laughs> وأنا ما حدا بيحكي معي هيك يتسلى معي So I'm talking about Hala. So this happened to her. Oh yeah, of turns co- out. I was kidding. Of course, she's talking about herself. Yeah, turns out. No, she said. Turns out, I know it's exactly what she told. I know. Can't I'm talking about Hala? He's talking about the time for you. Hey, who would you tell him? He said, "I'm going to get married." I know, which is fair. Hey, as long as you, as long as <laughs> people are in agreement. Yeah, I know. Don't lead her on. Not I know. Tati, I hope. But then, Allah, but I'm. So he led her on. Yeah. She was led on. Sah. 
لا افرق لي كريب وي سكيب ليتر او بنكمل بعد لا لا انا عم بدي حد دال تعيدنا بثلاثه فيديوز عم بتعيد نفس القصه انا مش ديز ريلي سي دو يو ثينك اتس ذات جاي هو كيم تو فيزيت هير اند اشتري لها قهوه لا اي ذاك انه كانت مبسوطه مزبون عادي بلشت مبسوطه كانت ما كل العالم بلشت ما بحس لا ذني بروك هير هارت ذا واك ذي هاد ا A pretty cringy video a few weeks ago. Let's see, they have a new one. Let's mm-hmm. check it out. I hate this. I hate this, this sound. Is so bad. <laughs> Copyright because of this. Uh <laughs> it's pretty bad. I wouldn't say it's cringy, it's just bad. It's so bad. Like just bad. Hey, the money is good. Hey, he's so bad. Let's watch this. Holy no, it on folks. This these are no submissions. Holy and hey, the Anotiki is inspired. Anotiki is inspired. Feti tsbun el ande jay min Honolulu khassisan la ande. Wa hazaru min shufu el karam, shufu el haya, shufu el damir. شوفوا ولاد الاصل شيلون الايجا ما بدي اياهم على الشو هول وات ذا فاك از ذا سكيب برو لا وشو هذيك الثانيه؟ وات ذا اون ذا واك حرام ذا واك كمان اشيلون سو تذكروا جايز ذا سفير ذا فيجاس سفير حكينا عنه هيرز ا تويت The Wynn Golf Club is one of the most expensive public access courses in the country. It costs $600 plus per day to golf at that resort. And now you must stare at a 360-foot tall and 516-foot wide fake eyeball when you play. They can't be happy about that. Now, I tried to put myself in the, you know, in the, in the shoes of a golfer who pays $600 to golf. And I have to stare at this the whole time. Is it always on? My bad. If that's what I'm thinking, like, look at it. Isn't it's, it's it like blinking. so expensive to to light? Up? Honestly, it looks stupid. I know. I said it looked very cool, and it is. But Map has something like this should be in the middle of a city. Yeah, I see. Build that yeah. shit out in the desert, yo. Move out into the desert. <laughs> look how stupid this look looks. Look at the uh, golf and place at the hello. Hey, like this ruins everything. Like Las Vegas has so many like historic buildings, like old hotels, like the Bellagio, Michele, like nice landmarks. Yeah. Hello, they all look like little pieces of shit compared to this giant shiny thing. Yeah, and it, yeah, the more it, they're building one in London too, which I think is a yeah, and it built this outside in the city in London. Yeah, and this is going to outshine everything. The eye of London. That's horrible. My body for I would put this. Yeah, it's kind of like another eye. I, I would build this out in the desert, bro. مثل ما هي حطوا على تراكتور كاميون. Get this the fuck out of the city, man. This looks stupid as hell. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's very impressive, and I'm sure concerts inside are going to be mind blowing. Mm. But Damon, I'm to smash Chevy Vegas, so there's a fucking eyeball looking at you like a basketball, whatever it is, bro. It's kind of stupid looking, weird, distracting. I find, and it takes away from just. It's a huge little bridge, bro. Then by the kiss the arm. It's huge, man. My bad. I I I find it weird. Anyways, it's kind of funny that you're golfing and you got to stare at this fucking thing. For hours, it's kind of especially for rich people. And anything when bad things happen to rich people, I kind of find that funny. <laughs> so these are Masters Tornado Lemon Chili flavored chips, folks. Uh, this is meant to, you know, compete with Takis. We, there, there's two kinds. There's like puffs. I thought the blaze were like spicier, but they're not. It's just a puff version, kind of like a you know Cheetos or something. Oh, and that that one? No, this one just from the packaging. Oh. And these are like an o- open flat tortilla. It's not like a roll tortilla. So let's see what these taste like. And I, honestly, I think Takis. Takis were fun for a couple of weeks. Then, but the fish in the Takis. I had my kelp Takis. No, I had to do it. No way. Let's try the regular chip. But the quiet, I had to do it. I'm an ASMR experience. Okay. I can taste the lime. For sure. This has got a weird, and it is spicy. It is hot. This has got a weird taste. Like my style, I didn't enjoy the first one. Enjoyed the second one more. It is very acid, though. Hamula. <laughs> It's very acidic. It's kind of like the takis. That's what I'm looking at. I know. Now takis, the acidity, taban, is more lemony. But I don't like it. Hey, it's so fake. 
Like, I don't think I would eat a bag of these, you know what I mean? But that's wrong, so I got all the spices on my throat. The black dough in the puff and under cake, I'm going to take it with you at the house, since you're liking them. Look, if I'm going to eat one of these, I'm going to buy Takis, to be honest with you guys. I'm not going to buy these. Uh, this is not something that I would buy a second time. Unless Muffy Takis and I really want something spicy with the lime. Hold on, wait. With Takis and the Nutella. No, because Danway is very close to Nutella. Mm. No, what, Rob? Mm. <laughs> Takis. Really All this is, this is just acidity, bro. This is just like a bunch of like lime. Ah. That's it. Anyways. It's like just citric acid. So no good for Sina Yeah, and obviously go for it. Takis are huge. If you can make a cheaper version of Takis that you can sell, why not? You know? I don't even I'm not even a fan of Takis anymore, so I am not the target demographic for this product. Truan Oppenheimer, Uja Dal Dakani. Christopher Nolan and Jad Al Dakani, two men who deserve two to men. be in the same <laughs> sentence. Two, two greats. Taib. What do we talk about first? Jad, Muhammad, the dietitian. Taib. Jad. Let's get this out of the way just because I, I don't like talking about this because it stresses me out. Because believe it or not, I do think Jad Al Dakani is a nice guy. He's a nice kid. Who, uh, we may have our differences, but he's, he's always been nice to me. I've met him once in person. He was very nice and sweet, even though I'll tell you guys the story. But so no, he's laying it out there. He's nice to me. Who, um, throughout the past few days, he and I have gone back and forth over WhatsApp. Yeah, and he tried to reach out to me personally. Who tried to make things right on his end. So I don't hold anything like against him personally. Honestly, I would, Jad Ardakani is a person I never would have spoken of in my life if he hadn't reached out to me like in the first place. Who women? She sent in, bought the message like, hey man, I'm a big fan. Of you, he sent very similar messages to, to, to Moin uh, from, from Serde. He's like, hey, Anthony, really big fan of yours. I kind of want to start a podcast. I'm very inspired by you. If I ever need advice, Rick, I would love to ask you. And I was like, whatever you need, bro. Anytime you need, I'm here to help. That was my first experience. That was my first time meeting Jadar Dakani. Well, I remember checking out his YouTube channel. I was like, damn, you have like 75,000 subscribers. That's awesome. Who His sister is a very famous, like pop star she's part of like a pop group she sings he used to do basically video reactions on youtube he used to react to his sister's music videos so he was able to amass a massive subscriber base on youtube he has like tens and tens of thousands he's at ninety thousand subscribers he didn't get his subscribers because of his podcast he got them because of the old videos that he used to do then he wants to switch the focus of his channel to start making podcasts i was like whatever you need bro shumabaddaq his first guest on the podcast ended up being Tufiruk. And I was like, that's kind of weird for someone who's a fan of my show and someone who says that he likes my show and someone who reached out to me for advice, et cetera, et cetera. I always found it weird that his first guest on the podcast was Tufiruk. And while I say that I kind of got over that, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And I never fully really got over that. Not that like, I felt offended or insulted. I didn't get over it. But I was like, this Jad guy, I don't take him too seriously. And I don't trust him necessarily. Like, I love you. I'm a big fan. You inspired me. Then his first, the episode, the first episode of his podcast to bring on who was, who at the time was our biggest enemy as his first guest, I found was kind of a slap in the face, Yana, to be honest with you. Not that he meant to do it to hurt me. Well, she, who he just wanted to probably cause some controversy, get some interesting content to Heke. You know what I mean? He was doing it for views. But I was like, ah, oh, that's kind of a slap in the face. But when I reacted, I was like, it's kind of weird that you have someone like that as a guest. Katab comment on, on my video. He's like, Anthony, I would love to have a chance to come on your show and kind of explain my side of the story. I was like, ah, hello, sahala. We've never had a guest on our show, but I'm happy to have Jad on the show. Khafif chips is because it's going to make sound. Hello, darkness, my old friend. So I invited him to come on the show. Uh, we've never had a guest on the show. So I was like, yalla, come on and, uh, you know, explain yourself, Jad. So he came on the show, we talked. I asked him point blank, I'm like, Tabi Tayyib. It was like kind of a fun question, because I was putting him on the spot. But who do you prefer, me or Tufiruk? He couldn't answer that question. He was like, ah, oh, like both of you, ta 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 He spent the whole time, the whole, basically, the whole 40 minutes, 45 minutes, we had him on the air, kind of covering for Tufiruk and saying that, no, Tufiruk is kind of a nice guy, etc., etc. Which was not why I brought him on. I wanted to bring him on to, to kind of take a side, tell the truth. 
after we finished recording the episode, once the cameras were off, and I've never shared this with anyone before, Jad goes, uh, yeah, by the way, Tufiluk uh, called me a pussy yesterday. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, when he, saw, when he saw my comment asking you to bring me on your show so I can explain myself, he literally like, called me a pussy like, on the phone. I was like, and you just sat there for the past 45 minutes defending Tufiluk after just last night he called you a pussy? He's like, yeah, no, I didn't want to like, involve it and get like, you know, cause more drama. That kind of pissed me off, and I was like, we're going to fucking sit down and re-record the whole fucking thing, which we didn't do. The guy left. But for the next, like, few days, I was like, man, I can't believe, like, he just came over on my show. And again, I gave him a platform to explain himself, or he just kind of defended me. And again, like, my show ended up being a platform to defend Tufiluk. Ever since then, I was like, cut us, fuck it. Never thought of Jad's podcast ever again. Uh, I've checked it out a couple of times when he has interesting guests. But said, no, that's it. We interacted from time to time on social media. That's it. He actually invited me on once, like a few months ago. He asked me if I wanted to come on the podcast. I said no for two reasons. One, because Tufiluk was his first guest, and I found that, honestly, I don't want to be part of that lineup. Yeah, and you start your podcast with Tufiluk as a guest, I don't know if I want to be associated with any of that. And I told him, secondly, I'm not very comfortable being interviewed in general. I don't enjoy being interviewed. I don't enjoy being a guest on a podcast, regardless of who's inviting me. I always want to think about it. So I was like, this is a pretty easy decision for me to make because Tufiluk was your first guest. Khalas, you kind of started it off wrong with me, I felt. We didn't get off on the right foot. Um, he's got, ever s since then, Jad has continued to grow his podcast, inviting different guests on, some guests that I don't necessarily like. There's a crypto uh, NFT dude on there who supposedly, allegedly scammed some people. Let's not get into all of that. But so, no, he, he brings on a bunch of guests. Most recently, he invited Muhammad the Dietitian, who... We've had some beef with, some back and forth. I love Andrew Tate, I'm going to on Instagram because he keeps talking about Andrew Tate. Who, we're using Andrew Tate as his main example for, um, you know, for, for, for discipline. He, f he literally body shames people in the comment section. If someone criticizes Muhammad the dietitian, literally a comment that he will often write is, I just checked your profile, you need help or something like that. You shouldn't be one to talk. I don't know if you think someone doesn't look attractive, their physical appearance. Again, for a personal trainer to do, that's kind of fucked up and that's kind of douchey. So Jad, as his latest guest on the podcast, Azam, Muhammad the dietitian, someone who he knows we've had history with in the past, someone who is a known Andrew Tate supporter, someone who is a known body shamer, someone who I consider to be kind of an asshole. I don't have a problem to say it. I know a lot of people who know Muhammad the dietitian, people who know him in my boxing gym, they're like, yeah, Sa'il, it'il, ma bienta. So no offense, my guy, but it's not a lot of people like you. And we're going to get to that in a little bit. So, Binazlo. This ad, this is the ad that comes out, I guess, for the podcast between Jad and Muhammad the Dietitian. معقول انت تنام بالحبس وما بدك تقوم تشيل الفيديو تقول له بدي انام بالحبس ما شفت حالي عملت شي غلط انا عم بوعي الناس قال لي بدك تنام بالحبس بلشت افحص منتجات بلبنان اللي ما فينا نسميهم شو هن عملت اكبر غلطه اللي هلا بندم عليها كمان رجعت رحت على المخفر شو المشكله مع انتني سارجن مزبوط هالارقام اللي عم تشوفها جيمز اوف تو ذاتس اول ذاتس اول يو نيد از بيزلي شو المشكله مع انتني سارجن سو هون ذس بيبل سيند مي ذس اد لايك يو ذي ار توكينج اباوت يو اي واز لايك اوكي تو بي اونست يو جايز اي ديد نوت واتش ذا بودكاست ذات ذي ذات ذي ديد سم ون ون اوف اور فيورز ون اوف اور باترونز اكشلي سات ثرو the whole thing the eight minute chunk that where they talked about me uh, they sent it to me and i have it cut up into multiple different parts i'll be honest with you guys i don't even know if i want to watch it and and react to it right now because it's long it's eight minutes it's not even really that fun or interesting if you guys are interested go check it out on ajad's podcast honestly i would be bringing more attention to this than they themselves would be bringing because the point that i made a few days ago on instagram by the way if you guys don't follow me on instagram sometimes I go crazy. You buy me my shake on Instagram, Instagram stories, Ibnazi stories, then I delete them in a few hours. So you don't get everything here. Sometimes you'll miss out on some things. Sometimes I'll resolve drama on Instagram, then I'll come here. Hey, it's all been resolved. So follow me on Instagram at Anthony Sargon if you're interested in that kind of thing. I saw the trailer for that episode and uh, I just put a comment, okay? Hatit hey that comment ala the post. It got a bunch of replies. So I said, Jad, my guy, stop inviting assholes on your show and asking them about me. Thanks. I get a reply from Hamad the dietitian. He says, Anthony, giving you free exposure. You've been working hard with your pronouns crowd. I said, wow, you really got me there. F the two of y'all and your exposure, lol. He replies, very tough behind the screen. Can't have a discussion without dissing people. Cheap ass. Well, I, I don't have a problem talking to you face to face. I invited him. Come to my boxing gym. We'll have some fun. He didn't really answer. He said, oh, you box? That's interesting. Shiheke. He didn't really accept or deny uh, my invitation. Again, you want to come spar? 
I'm, I'm way, I'm more than happy to spar out our differences gently. <laughs> Anyways, so come into these comments just kind of pissed me off, especially the exposure thing. Like we're going to give you exposure. I'm like, oh, exposure. Okay, great. Tayyib. What kind of exposure are we actually going to get? So I go on to Jadar Dakani's YouTube. And as of this recording, okay, as of this recording on Tuesday, July 25th, their episode has 3.5 thousand views. So 3,500 views. Uh, that is about half of what a typical Do Not Worry episode usually gets, which is weird because Jadar Dakani has over 90,000 YouTube subscribers. He's at 93.6K subscribers on YouTube, almost at 100K. That's a massive number. Muhammad the Dietitian has over 160,000 followers on Instagram. Jadar Dakani has like 60,000 followers on Instagram. Jadar Dakani has 200,000 followers on TikTok. All these combined hundreds of thousands of followers and so many ways to get people to click on that link and watch the podcast between Muhammad the Dietitian and Jadar Dakani. All of that, 3,500 views, which is nothing, folks. Now, I'm not here to shame anyone's views. I'm not here to shame. Hard, it's very hard to get YouTube views. Okay, and now we our average views are between six to 8,000, and we've been doing this for over two years. So 3,000 is a decent number. But so when you have 90,000 subscribers, 3,000 is not a good number at all, man. Okay, now I get six to 8,000 views. I have 8,000 subscribers. They're very relative to my number of subscribers. A YouTube channel, literally the episode, Abel Muhammad the Dietitian, and it's late meet alpha views. So it's not like Jad's episodes get shit views all the time. 327K, Ma Fatima and Darin. I don't know who they are. Darin, Fatima and Darin Jafar, they're probably two they're famous TikTokers, influencers. Yeah. They're huge TikTokers. Look, people gave a shit about them. Head to their podcast. Muhammad the Dietitian, I'm not taking exposure, bro. I am giving you more exposure now by talking about you on my podcast than your one hour and a half sit down, Majad Dar Dakani. No one gives a fuck of what you have to say, bro. So I'm not really going to go through anything you said on that podcast. And he said some disgusting shit about like gay people. Who Most people that comment and hate on the same videos, they're homosexuals. What? Mainly homosexuals or pronoun people. Mm. It's not okay to be fat. And the liberals, you want to label that. Yeah. I'm just uh, Muhammad the dietitian. One, what I just want to address, I just want to address, I guess, really Muhammad. You know, he he says what he says to get attention. He says what he says to get views and clicks. Ujad even agreed with him on the Andrew Tate thing. Like, yeah, it's marketing 101. Marketing technique. Marketing I love, 101. I, I guess what I want to say, without, I know you guys might want me to watch the videos and react to them one by one. But all I'm going to say right now, and I'm going to direct this to Jad. Mishla Muhammad. Muhammad the Tishan Khalas. He's doing his thing. He wants to be a bully. He wants to get the red pilled Andrew Tate fans on his page. La Aida, bro. Have fun. Make your money training them. Uh, you know, I don't really give a fuck. So, what I'm going to say now is just directed at Jad. Jad, what I would do, now look, you have, on the surface, your podcast is successful. You have episodes with. 20,000 views, 25,000 views, 20,000 views, etc. But you as a host, you don't really stand for anything. And the biggest example of that was when you came on my show. I was like, who do you like? Me or Tufiluk? Uh, both. You're the kind of person who tries to please everyone. And by trying to please everyone, you end up pleasing no, no one and accomplishing nothing. Sometimes in life, it's okay to take a stand. It's okay to say, you know what? This person is kind of an asshole. I'm going to call him out. This person, I kind of like him. I'm not going to call him out. I'm not telling you that you need to like me because I've, you, you could say that I've been an asshole to you, but that's just because I feel like I can't trust you and you kind of slime me in a couple of ways. The way Bajib Holy, these guests that you know have problems with me, you bring them on a, on a forum where I can't respond to what they're saying, where they can talk about me uncontested. And then go, like, yeah, but I like you. You're my, I, I was inspired by you. I don't, I'm starting to doubt you've ever fucking watched an episode of this, of this fucking podcast, my guy. But anyways, what do I mean by you don't have much of a personality or you don't really take a stand because no one watches your podcast unless you have a famous guest on, okay? And that is just, we can prove that very easily. So you just had Wa'il Araji. In two days, that video got 13,000 views. That's because people care about Wa'il Araji. You had Muhammad the Dietitian on, your 90,000 subscribers could barely get you to three, yeah, no, three and a half thousand views. That means if no one cares about your guest, no one cares about what you have to say. It's not like... You gotta pick a fucking side. Anyways, be careful. Oppenheimer, folks. Uh.
That was our Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Thank you. Uh, obviously, the whole world is enjoying Barbenheimer. You know, Barbie and Oppenheimer. We're in the Middle East. They still say it's postponed. I'm not. I, I think it's banned. Fat bet. I would say Barbie is banned. Anyways, best on Oppenheimer, the latest movie from Christopher Nolan. I got to watch it in Dubai. Mish be IMAX, but at the Roxy Extreme, which is bigger than IMAX, hatta, oh. which was, it was fantastic. I read on Twitter that IMAX be Lebanon, the AC. Yeah, that's what I read. That's why I didn't go. The AC not mesh. Hala zabatu apparently. I spoke to a friend. She told me, you know. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I think I'm be dauru. I think they're lying. I'm be dauru. What the fictir alam? Or I'm be what the fictir alam? I'm be dauru. So I'm uh, not to be Dubai just because I saw it in Dubai. They cut out the sex scene in Dubai, so I didn't get to see the sex scene. Anyways, I fucking love the movie. I thought Oppenheimer was brilliant, and I love Christopher Nolan. I don't love all his movies. Tenet, Makir Habayto. But no, I love obviously Inception, The Dark Knight, Memento, all that sort of thing. Dunkirk was very good. He's one of the rare and only directors who can get like a hundred million dollars from a studio to make an original fucking movie not based on a superhero or a comic book or a video game mm-hmm. or something. Christopher Nolan is one of the only people in Hollywood who can sell his na- a movie on his name alone. And if this is that Christopher Nolan directed a movie, it doesn't matter who's acting in it, it doesn't matter what the story is about, doesn't ma- nothing matters. Nolan made a movie, it is enough for people to go to a fucking theater, buy the most expensive ticket, which is usually IMAX, and sit their ass down for two, two or three hours and watch whatever the fuck that man made. Because that guy does not fuck around. Mm-mm. And I fucking loved Oppenheimer. I'll just say that. No? I, I, I fucking loved it as well. What a fucking Angel. movie. Yeah, and the word masterpiece gets thrown around a lot, and I don't throw it around very often. But that movie was a fucking masterpiece. It's fucking it's intense. It really was. Yeah, and I didn't know much about the J. Oppenheimer, uh, J. Uh, what the fuck, Robert J. J. Robert, J. Robert J. Opp- J. Robert Oppenheimer. J. Robert Oppenheimer. I didn't know much about J. Robert Oppenheimer before watching this movie. I just knew like the quotes and I've become death and all that stuff. Uh, what a movie! The scene where the explosion happens, the Trinity test happens. I will say, I did, I did feel a little bit of uh, mm. like PTSD mm. having lived through the August Fourth blast. Once you hear the boom, you fucking feel it, bro. Those fucking speakers. Everything. Was per- this scene is per- the timing is so perfect like he waited just the right amount of time everything it was crazy once once they drop the bomb on japan and then he has to give a speech basically that speech and how he's feeling and then the audio design and the audio mix in that whole scene was fucking fantastic there's just there's shots in the movie hey the out of context where he's like sitting in the cockpit of a plane he saw a rocket flying when he was sitting in a cockpit and they go back to that scene a few times so mesmerizing zero cgi shots in all the movie everything you see all the explosions all the little particle effects when they're talking about quantum physics and they're trying to visualize it for you it's all done analog and practically zero fucking cgi which makes it even more impressive the whole movie cost 100 million dollars which is half the budget it's crazy it's crazy. Only 100 million when Ant Man and the Wasp 3 Quantumania. At a film Belalam, Shumayer from beginning to end, the quality will affect Skillo Bilae, Kellef 200 million dollars. Twice as much as this fucking three hour, impeccably shot epic. Only 100 million dollars. And it's making so much money and it deserves it. If you have not seen it, go fucking watch it. If you go to Vox Bilul called Mafi AC, Ask for a refund, because that's what my friend did. She asked for a refund. Then they're like, yee, zabat al-AC. So, no, try. And I want to watch it a second time. I don't want to watch it. Yeah. I want to watch it in the perfect condition. You got to watch it in IMAX. Oh, my God. I watched it in the mall. First, it's a name for the mall. It's IMAX. It's actually a name for the mall. It's not a name for the AC. When this show Saelian and Jed, like people won't change. Oh, it was a shitty Wha- experience. What the huh? explosion? Like, I know, okay, but all it was silent. I had the head, you know, and Muffy and Taza are stored. Oh my god, Scotia yeah, yeah. Scotia was stored. Be not the scene, he fucked the movie. That, I'm gonna uh, see it another time just because of that. I want to see it. I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna see it. The it was 10 a.m. bro. Dubai, everyone's so fucking respectful. So everyone's just sitting quietly. Bro, I fucking loved it. Anjad, Killian Murphy, just let me say that. There's tons of amazing performances. Mafi Messil be Hollywood, Manno Belfin. Every actor be Hollywood is an Oppenheimer. But Sanjad, Killian Murphy with that wow. lead performance. Yeah, and everyone's like, Robert Downey's the best. This guy's the best. They're all great. 
No one touches Killian Murphy. This is his fucking movie from beginning to end. Is a man biyakhud al Oscar for best fucking lead actor. Ana nizil ahrud walib. Ma baarif yani. He's so fucking perfect, and it's a performance that asks a lot because it's got to be very subtle. A lot of it is just in his eyes, with that. He's torn on the inside. We come in at people online. What about the Japanese perspective? Why didn't you show the Japanese suffering? Yeah, it's an Oppenheimer movie. It's an Oppenheimer. <laughs> Have you heard of Japanese cinema? They've got tons of movies about what they went through after the, the explosion. So there's literally a new wave. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you don't, do you want a British white guy to tell you the, to explain the Japanese experience? Or would you rather have it come from them? So let it go watch Japanese movies for that. This is not this movie's job. Okay. This is Oppenheimer. This is the Trinity test. This is, it's brilliant. God bless Christopher Nolan. The movies are fucking back, baby. All I can say is I'm sad that Barbie Manizil Madin Anamil Barbenheimer yeah. would have been a legendary fucking sad. weekend at the movies. It would have been so fucking fun. Inshallah Inzal Barbie be in August. I'm not knowing me and I'm in the I'm not hopeful. You know, I think I think Akharula Echir August Taninsa basically. They want us to forget, you know. Fucking asshole about it. So <laughs> that's what I think. Jadar Dakani, God bless you. I don't know why I just thought about Jadar Dakani right now. <laughs> Jad, oh yeah, Jad. God bless you. My God my Trinity you. test. God bless you, Jad. <laughs> Anjad, God bless you. Shubhan and Uli. It has been an overwhelming episode. Yeah, overwhelming love emotions. Anjad, love us. Jad. With all that said, let me thank a few of our amazing patrons. Patrons. Karim Ayad. Wissam Musa. Yellow Diarrhea. Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. And Dr. Octopus. Superhero patrons like Kevin Masad, Melting Around, Joey Dabu, Dr. William Watfa, The Boobs Doctor, and our God-tier patrons Jessica Ann, Rifat Faki, and, and Burgery. Burgery, the best burgers in Tripoli. So I don't know how this episode is going to turn out. I don't know how it many episodes are going to be. It was great, honestly. Yeah. Uh, we love you guys. We thank you for, like, I'm sorry if, this, if, if I'm ever negative, if you feel like I'm over hating or something. If you think I overreacted with Jazz, please let me know in the comments. My bad, if you know. We, we've, I've been doing this for a long time, two and a half years. Yeah, it's been And I long. like, you know, when someone tells you they're an ally, I like them to be an ally. I don't like the squishy-washy stuff. You mm. know what I mean? I don't like someone who tells me one thing and then they do another thing and then like, no, no, but the, the, if you wanted the drama, you wanted the heat. I, I told Jad, if you don't want smoke, don't play with fire. <laughs> I told him that. Went to Nabil, As always. Do not worry. <laughs>